Hey guys, I said I had some uh, tips and tricks for flow along surface that I would share. So while I'm waiting for a printer to warm up, I will, thought I would do it real quick. All right, so we all know how to start flow along surface. The first thing we need is our base surface and our target surface. So the normal way you would do this is to say extract surface. And I've got copy on, so I'm not gonna mess up my original ring. I'm gonna grab that and then I'm gonna dump it off to its own layer over here. Change object layer. I've got uh, my layers menu on another screen so I could go full screen with this. And then uh, also in layers menu, I'm going to lock the ring so it's not selectable anymore. The only thing I can pick over here out of all of this is just this surface. Okay, the next thing we would do is take this and say create UV curve. And if there's any curves that are on the surface that you want to include um, when it flattens this out uh, as reference points. So if you have a curve on here and you want to use that um, to array out stones or anything like that, you would want to include that here as well. I don't have any, so I'm just going to tell it OK. And then once I have my surface, I'm going to call planar surface and immediately check the direction because I don't want to have to fool with that later. I'm going to grab both of them and see that this surface direction has blue going this way and red going this way. And over here, I've got blue going that way and red going out um, to the right. So what I need to do is take this surface and rotate it 90 degrees so that the direction of both of these are in sync. So I'm going to take this and do rotate and broke history, that's fine. We can dump that curve. And the next thing I want to do is move it. And from that midpoint over here, I have my objects. Uh, I finished this ring a few days ago, so everything's already laid out. I'm going to snap it to that quad right there. Um, here's the objects that I'm going to lay out. They start, this started off as a round flower. I've done some cage editing on it already to fit the shape of the ring. Um, but let me show you what kind of distortion I'm talking about. I never flow the other half. I'm going to lock that. I never flow the other half because when I start messing with this in history updates, it's going to reflow all of these around, along the surface. I don't want to have to recalculate all of these. I just want half of it. And I'm going to take these two guys and mirror it over there um, on the target surface. And that just saves me a little computation time because mirroring is much more simple than calculating the flow for all of the objects at the same time. So let's go ahead and do our flow along surface. I'm going to pick this base corner and I've got rigid off so it's going to flow along and hug this surface like it's hugging that surface over there. Pick this corner and right off the bat you can see how much distortion is here. Um, I'm taking it from a square surface to a, a kind of triangular surface. It's got a lot of taper to it at the top. <clears throat> now, one of the things you can do to try and overcome this is to take and rebuild these surfaces to have more uh, control points. So right now I've got 13 and 14. Let's just take it to 30 and 30. Oops, 30 and 30 and tell it okay. And now I've got a very dense UV uh, set of UV control points. And the object did update a little bit. Let's try rebuilding this surface as well. Let's do the same 30 and 30. And this change is going to be even more minuscule. And history is updated. And let me go ahead and select half of this and mirror it. Oh. Okay. Now, using this rebuild trick is great for if you were laying out some stones and over there on the flat surface, you've laid them out where they're all a quarter millimeter apart from each other, just to allow for any small inconsistencies in the stone when you're trying to set them. If you don't have enough control points in your target surface or your base surface, when you lay it out, some are going to be 0.1 millimeter away from each other. Others are going to be 0.3. It's that small difference that really um, that this trick of rebuilding the UV control points will fix. 
but it's not going to affect the distortion of it at all. Um, so what I want to do is delete all of this and delete that base surface over here. And actually we'll just run through and undo it. Okay, I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to call smash. And just take the linear direction of natural. And if there's any curves on the surface, we want to unroll same as if with uh, create UV. If there's a curve on there that you need to keep for reference or for tracking, you would click on it now, hit enter. And the resulting surface is going to match the shape of this surface. It basically just takes all the control points and mashes them flat against the seaplane. Let's rotate this around so it's oriented the same way. I don't need to check the direction on it because the direction is the same. It just smashed it. It didn't, there is no reorientation of anything. Um, let's take and move this from the midpoint over here to this midpoint. Relock these guys, not him. Now, I'm going to take these and call flow along surface again and pick a corner and pick this corner. Okay, there we go. Now, all of a sudden you can see our results are much better. There's still a slight amount of distortion, but nowhere near what we were experiencing earlier with uh, different shaped base and target surfaces. Some people will try and use a square target surface and do cage editing on the objects to make them look normal over here. They'll really distort their input to get a undistorted output. You can do that, but it's a huge pain in the butt to try and do that for every object on here. The cage editing I did for these objects was just to take a completely squ uh, square triangle here. Um, I used a triangle and swept, did a, a sweep one. It's the same triangle as this one, but I used cage editing just to bend it around to match the shank. Um, the flower was completely round. I needed it to be a little bit flat here because this is where the bottom of the finger rail went. I had to smash or, or, or move in the petals just a little bit to get it to fit. That's the kind of cage editing I did. I didn't have to take and make a oblong flower over there so it became a round flower over here. So that's my little flow along surface trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I gotta go get a printer running. See you guys on the forum.